All right, so as a supplement to the last video, we're now going to be doing some uh, one-dimensional kinematics practice problems. Basically, just applying the principles and equations that we learned in the last video. So if you haven't watched that video, uh, there are going to be plenty of references to uh, mathematics and stuff that you probably won't uh, understand. With that said, uh, we're going to move on now to actual problems with you know specific numbers and whatnot, and uh, practicing using our equations to solve. So the first problem we're going to look at is a situation where you have a ball being dropped off you know a building with some windows or whatnot. Let's say this building is 40 meters in height, and what we want to know is when the ball is about to hit the ground, you know, with some velocity on it. We want to know how long the ball is going to take to hit the ground as well as how fast it's going. So what its velocity is going to be. And it's actually easier to solve for the velocity before we solve for the time. And how is that you may ask? Well we use our time independent equation that uh, we derived last video. So if you ca in case you don't remember that's V equals v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x. Now, in this case, uh, we just plug in our normal values to this equation and solve for uh, the final velocity. So, in this situation, the ball is just being dropped, so there's no initial velocity, and the acceleration is equal to the gravitational acceleration, which is represented by g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, which we usually approximate as just 10 meters per second squared. Now, plugging these values in, we get v squared equals 2 g, and then delta x is just the height. So your velocity will be represented by these values. Basically, your final velocity at the bottom will be root 2 g h. And then, all you have to do is plug in values so you get root 2 times 10 meters per second squared approximately and 40 meters in height which is root 800 or about 28.3 meters per second. From here now we can solve for the time it takes to fall because we already know the velocity and we don't have to deal with any squares or whatnot. So if you recall, our equation for velocity given a constant acceleration is v equals v0 plus at. So if we have the final velocity is 28.3 meters per second, in this case it's downwards but uh, that's not relevant, uh, our v0 is 0 so that cancels out. So we just get that 28.3 equals, and remember our acceleration is just g, so g times t. And then because g we approximate as 10, all you have to do is move the decimal place over, and you get the time it takes to fall is 2.83 seconds. Moving on now, we're going to be looking at a particle undergoing uh, some sort of force, so it's accelerating and its velocity as a function of time were actually given and it's that's described by 4 plus 3t not cubed t squared basically what we want to know is how far it goes from time t equals 0 accelerating this whole way until time t equals here we'll just write t's in there t equals 3 basically we want to know the total displacement or its total, you know, how far it goes from point A to point B if its velocity is given by this and it's just traveling in that straight line. So, if you'll remember from the last video, uh, we have position represented by x, velocity and acceleration represented by v and a respectively, related via calculus functions basically. So, this way you are deriving to go from position to velocity to acceleration and the opposite way you integrate to go from acceleration to velocity and then back up to position. So if we're given an equation for velocity and we want to find a displace the displacement which is a measure of uh, position what we can do is just integrate this velocity function to solve for our displacement. So we'll integrate 
our velocity with respect to time to get our change in x. From here, it's just a matter of plugging in values. So we're going from time t equals 0 to time t equals 3. And the function is given by 4 plus 3t squared, all equaling that displacement delta x. Then you just integrate according to uh, what you learned in calculus. So you get 4t plus, bring this up here, uh, t cubed from 3 to 0 equals your total displacement or 4 times 3 plus 3 cubed, which is 12 plus 27, or 39 meters during those three seconds. All right, so the final problem we're going to be looking at in this video sort of requires an integration of many of the equations we've looked at already. And so I'll outline the basic problem for you uh, right now. Basically, you start with a particle at the origin, so x equals 0, at time t equals 0, and it's accelerating constantly this way. So it starts off with a small acceleration and increases gradually at the same rate. So at time one second, it's gone a total of two meters. And then one second later, at time t equals two seconds, it's gone some other distance. Let's call that s. Uh, but we're not interested in s. What we want to know is at this time t equals two seconds, what is its velocity. In other words, how fast is it going over here to the right? And so the first thing we have to do to find this velocity is determine what exactly this k is. What is the acceleration that this is undergoing to bring it two meters in one second? So we use our standard equation for position because we know its position at a certain time. x equals x naught plus v zero t plus a over two t squared. Now uh, because it starts at x equals 0, we cancel that out, and it has no initial velocity. It starts from rest up here, so that term also cancels out. So you get x equals a over 2t squared. Now we know the time and position we're going to be plugging in. In this case, uh, it goes 2 meters, a over 2, in 1 second squared. And because that's just 1, you bring this 2 up here, through multiplication, and you get the acceleration it's undergoing is 4 meters per second squared. From here, it's just a matter of, uh, because velocity varies linearly with the acceleration, all you have to do is uh, write down our equation for velocity as a function of time, and plug and chug. So. Uh, we're trying to find the velocity at this time, t equals 2 seconds. And the initial velocity is 0, because once again, it's starting from rest. So that term cancels out, and we get v equals at. From there, we know the acceleration, which is 4 meters per second squared, and we know the time, which is at time t equals 2 seconds. So the final velocity is 8 meters per second at time two seconds. In the next video, we'll be moving on from this sort of linear one directional kinematics to two in kinematics and motion in two and three dimensions.